discharge what you discharge because yeah. you're worth it. You're worth all of that. You're worth all of your experience in life, your experience in mm-hmm. as a human, but as a vocalist and in just managing all of those factors so that in the moment you can connect and do a good that job. That is so good. Ready to go learn how to live healthier, wealthier and wiser as an artist in showbiz? Hey, I'm Lara Bianca Pilcher. I'm crazy about helping artists to live out their creative dreams and nurture themselves at the foundation of their creative career. I'm an artist and actor and showbiz educator with over 20 years in the arts and entertainment industry in London, Australia and now Atlanta, USA. I'm here to show you how to navigate this topsy-turvy world called showbiz, uncover the secrets of success, unlocking the powerful artist you are. I've done a lot, performed, worked in TV, film, radio, stage, produced, directed, choreographed, acting, singing, voice work, musical theatre, dance company, toured, moved, casting, auditioned, self-tape, teaching, press, critics, branding, marketing, side hustles and all the hoo-ha while maintaining a happy marriage with two gorgeous kids. And there will only be real talk here, friends. Think of this podcast as a masterclass in helping you build your creative career while also learning how to holistically navigate the artist's life. This is the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise Artist Podcast. Well, this is going to be a fun episode and we're talking about what injuries take performers and we're not just talking about one kind of performer. What takes them out or makes it very difficult for them? And I'm going to ask performers, specialist, physical therapist, physiotherapist in some sides of the world, Andrew Pilcher, who's also my husband, but he is right here with me. Hey. hey. His CV is off the chart. I mean, we're talking, working with BBC Films in London, over 150 West End musicals in London, which is Mm -hmm. the Broadway of London for those who don't know, which would be weird if you didn't, but... He's actually now based in the US working with a company that works with the Marvel films and a lot of Netflix films as well as all Broadway. Broadway and all the touring shows in the US. Mm-hmm. In London, I had the privilege to work with Coldplay and work with a lot of recording artists, yeah. so Lulu Kennedy Cairns and some big names who are connected in that music world. Mm. And the opera scene too, so it goes on. Uh-huh. <laughs> and some pretty famous actors too. I remember when you were on Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch's cast there and Harry Potter and a few of the actors from those sorts of shows. But being based here in the USA, he's working with USA-based companies, which mm-hmm. is cool. But he also trains physical therapists in how to work with performers. And he's worked with a lot of artists himself. So this man knows performers. He's also been up to Nashville a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. And working in recording studios with musicians and singers, <laughs> singer songwriters. Yeah. Particularly helping. You've got a niche area there, don't you? Yeah, I work with the voice. Uh, so it's in the area of muscle tension dysphonia, if you want uh, li- listening from a clinical standpoint, uh, but voice problems and physiotherapy or physical therapy to help that side of things. So it overlaps a little in voice coaching but it is principally hands-on work to the throat to help vocalists. Mm, And of course, the voice is important for not just singers, but actors, voice artists, Mm -hmm. and a lot of the other people that listen to this podcast. But we're going to talk about actors, dancers, singers, musicians, voice artists, and circus artists for one word for the most common area of struggle physically for each, just to just... You know, little. you guys try and guess. I'll give you like three seconds to guess. We'll play a game and then Andrew will do it. Okay, so dancers. Three, two, one. What is it, Andrew? <laughs> so I'm reading on recent research, older research, and that's my background to look statistically what the right answer is, but also what I've seen through my career. But my one word is ankle and foot. Sorry, that's two words. <laughs> <laughs> and you were saying to me earlier that it was in the musical theatre area, is that right? Well, we have to split this one up to be dancers in the contemporary dance world and or professional dance world, be it ballet or professionally dance companies, uh, or the musical theatre industry, which there are a different epidemiology and a different statistical basis to injuries. So I'd say in the musical theatre world, it would be a bit more varied between ankle and knee. Oh, I love that. Of course you would know that. <laughs> um, right, let's talk about singers, which might be a little bit obvious to the listeners. What do you think it is? No, let's go with Andrew. So you all thought voice, didn't you, Bart? Mm-hmm. Would it be 
probably more principally stress and anxiety type problems and neck issues. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about more about this in a moment. But musicians, again, we'd probably be able to guess. Take a guess, audience. What is it, Andrew? Probably wrist and forearm problems. <laughs> Of Those course. guitarists, you know. <laughs> yeah. We're talking RSI and other things, yeah. strain. So repetitive strain type problems, yeah. Okay, voice artists, as in voice actors, voiceover work, what? Neck. Ah, neck problems. not the voice, the neck. This is so interesting. And what about circus performers? We're talking at the elite level of Cirque du Soleil and that kind of, what do you think? Well, there is some published research from Cirque. So thank you, Cirque, for that. But there's a lot um, less research in the Cirque Cirque as well. But in my experience, it would be shoulder. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But generally, Cirque's listeners, there's a lot less injuries in the Cirque as well. So well done. (laughs) (laughs) That is amazing. But they train so hard. Mm -hmm. Like we were just at Cirque to Soleil together, weren't we, honey? Mm -hmm. And we Mm -hmm. were in the VIP experience. Oh, my goodness. It was magical. And they are just epic you guys if you're listening you're just epic you're amazing okay andrew has anyone lost their career as a performer this is a dumb question because of course they have but i'm going to ask it anyway who has lost their career that you know as a performer and why oh this one's tough because <laughs> in this area of an injury or injuries um we're geared and trained and my whole life is towards Sustaining someone's life mm-hmm. and their Career quality life. of life. <laughs> yes, the quality of life. <laughs> so my training and my purpose is, is geared towards um, improving someone's quality of life and uh, and making their career the best it can be and mm-hmm. their body the best they can be. Uh, so, so when this has happened for sure, um, when there's been injury that has just rampled on and has built up to this place where the person can't continue in their career, it is absolutely soul crushing and it, I yeah. wear that as a therapist too. And so I'm journeying through that with the person. And, um, and yeah, so it's, it's very uh, difficult to talk about. <laughs> um, but I'll talk about um, someone I treated uh, and I can't say where or what show can't they were say on. Their name. Their name <laughs> or what area. Well, I'll was, I was say there was a knee injury. So there was some flipping in a show um, and there was a bad landing uh, a little bit because of some partnering work and that sort of thing. Um, and so there was a nasty injury Aww. in this person's knee and um, they went ahead and uh, had a look at having some surgery um, and uh, that went very well. So there was some time off show and surgery went really well. Um, but um, afterwards they were talking about their rehabilitation. All things were going well from my side. They went to the surgeon and the surgeon said some very soul-crushing words. Oh, no. And then this was not medically or clinically true at all. But he looked at him and said, okay, so I'm just looking at timelines. And then the surgeon looked at him and just said, you're not going to dance again. Oh, wow. And that was not true at all. We were just like dumbfounded. Hey, I want to interrupt this episode for just a minute to give a shout out to some gorgeous people who left me a five-star written review. Thank you, Terry Oliver, Chip, Chipper19, Jay Monty611, Bethany Wilson, Ali Emma, Artist KJD, Marion in LA, London2, Amy Parks, Ianna Grant97, and Starbucks Lovin', as well as Mariah Hardy. Hey guys, thank you so much. They're just the American ones, and there's plenty more that have left five star reviews. You can do that. Head to Apple Podcasts, to my show, scroll to the bottom, tap five stars. Easy peasy. I'm going to read out some other country reviews in the next break. So I had some very strong words with the surgeon afterwards. Yeah. I just, I, I had a good authority to, to do so. We knew the surgeon, and that ch- changed. Um, that relationship in, in, in the positive, but this performer did not progress well after that. And oh. it somehow just had this very strong effect. And mm, this words person did can not be progress. so destructive. And especially if you believe that, uh, you know, you're in danger and you're not going to be able to recover. And that's why, I mean, I love what you do, Andrew, because you're actually a specialist with performers. And quite often, where one person that doesn't understand the bodies of performers like you do will say, you know, it's a death sentence. Your job is getting performers back up on stage or back on mic or back up to do their tour or their show quickly because that's what you do. And you know, after many years of seeing very similar things, don't you, that mm. 
that that just has to happen like you and you know I mean you know when to call it yeah. I'll come back to that question at the end, though, about when do you call it and mm-hmm. when do you not? Oh, love that question. <laughs> Such That's a good question. And, oh, so hang, hang in there for that. <laughs> okay, let's talk about dancers for a minute. They'll break it down. And what's a story of one show and one issue you dealt with? Right, so in a dance world in Melbourne, I was treating a dancer with a contemporary dance company and uh, there was an ankle injury they had. Um, and this is... You're going to think it's was an ankle rolling injury, aren't you? But it was actually more pain in the back of the ankle. So that's mm. probably the more typical dance um, ankle problem rather than just rolling the ankle, which does happen. Uh, but posterior ankle impingement is a very common occurrence and very big thing for dancers. Uh, and that is just whether you're getting irritation, over frictioning and um, inflammation in the back part re- nearly the Achilles tendon in that mm-hmm. back part of the ankle yeah um, and so I was helping her on and so we were uh, doing all of our rehab and I have a very holistic approach to get the most out of dancing while going through the treatment and getting treatment and sort of getting back to function on it um, and so we got her back quicker than she's kind of experienced before which was mm-hmm. fantastic but I think it was the 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 fun and the difficult thing was managing being the lead of the show and the stresses involved with that yeah and the stresses from the company management and whatnot mm-hmm. and it was just managed very well but it just was a lot on her plate and a lot on yeah. her shoulders. So you, I mean, you're talking psychologically when they come in. Pain affects the psyche, right? Yeah, yeah. in a huge way. Absolutely, and, and that's something you're quite passionate about. Yeah, that area, and my right? approach is just that there is this interlink uh, in our soul, in the deep parts of us, and I still just work as a physical therapist, or physiotherapist to treat problems and to to go from that physical standpoint but there is such an intermelding yeah and so that's my area of passion to kind of see and just to speak into that a little bit to bring some of that all together mm. I'm not a psychologist but just to bring all of it together to know how can I give enough attention to really what's going on and um, do I need to deal with something else and see another professional because um, I need some more help in mm-hmm. that area yeah. rather than just the physical things or whatever and just to look at diet and look at nutrition and look at all the things that's going to help me mm-hmm. um, uh, to just thrive and do the best I can um, with where this is but we were able to fast track the whole thing with this injury and just use the right bits of taping and offloading with footwear and it just really pushed her along so much better um so yeah that was fun you know i think about what you're saying and just you know how you know series regulars that are just having to learn lines get them out get them out get them out perform 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 if something goes wrong with their voice or another part of the body how difficult it is because essentially you can't understudy somebody on film because it's like it's not like a show where you can have second cover third cover so that gets really really tricky doesn't it but we'll come back to that in a minute this situation she this um performer was the lead and there wasn't the situation in this company of an understudy so Mm. there was that added pressure of like well we're just going to have to push on through and it was the injury that that was indicated that was a safe thing to do injury wise it's just going to make it a slower process um, but um, so that's that's always on our chart to be looking at. Is this a safe thing? Do we need to call this? You know, all those sort of situations. And in that world, in this um, dance company, in that situation, and there are many around the world in that situation, the sort of professional ballet company will have a different setup. And yeah. it was a nicer setup from an injury point of view. And that's great because the loading is different. Just different loading. There's a different day-to-day uh, workup of classes and loading and things they that the ballerinas and ballet um, professional ballet dancers go through mm. to the musical theater world um, both are busy both are very high there's loading, a load on both it's of different them. Yeah. and it's different way, set, way it's set up the musical theater world has a lot of understudy capability but within that within the company sometimes there ain't so so there's a yeah. lot of getting through and and whatnot and it's mixed with the sort of injuries in the musical theatre world and the dancers there um, is a little different because of the type of choreography. So mm-hmm. this is all mixed and I'm probably getting into different areas here. Um, but the understudy situation uh, really you know, changes the course of, of an injury. Of course, because it allows you t- downtime, doesn't it? Time to mm. rest. And, you know, we've worked, and Andrew as well, he's worked in London in the West End, but he's worked in Melbourne in the theatre scene there. 
and also in the film and music scene in both these places and now in the US. And really it's the same in everywhere, isn't it? Mm. It's not like one country or one particular environment has more issues. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about singers for a minute. What would you say is an issue that you've dealt with a lot with singers? Uh, well, so we would think, oh, how do they get through things with their voices and surely mm -hmm. their voice injuries? I think longer term in a vocalist's life, just like someone who um, does a lot of intricate things with their hands, they'll go through some degree of hand problem or hand uh, related issue most likely in their life, right? So a vocalist would have some degree of, of managing a some vocal rest or something where they will have to recover and, and all that. Mm. But I think what affects um, showmen and um, band members and uh, and uh, vocalists heading bands up or performers on shows would be things like their neck and they can um, they've got their pipes entwined their singing pipes but their the neck injury will just affect their movement will affect things and so a little morsel here is that the neck is strongly affects vocal performance and vocal mm. clarity or um, phonation easy phonation and the degree of laryngeal um, mobility and tension build up and that sort of thing so there's a very direct um, relationship between neck pain and more so when you have neck pain and or tension postural issues and that sort of thing and laryngeal mobility and you want as free tension through that laryngeal region as you can because you want freedom of movement the subtle small degree of motion through there that you need to place your voice a bit differently and just place the resonance you want and play with your voice as easy as you want it vocally uh, so if there's neck issue kind of going on it can hit the voice but it really just can affect the way you hold yourself the pain the pain really gets at your head so you're mm -hmm. just not thinking straight to give everything to that performance you can yeah and to this point that I, I was treating um, I treat very much holistically to look at the neck then a bit down towards the ribs and the mid back as well. Mm -hmm. So I think this performer laughed afterwards and would say, I got through those performances, but I mean, the the ice really helped. I was putting some ice on and I said, oh, right, between the acts or something, between <laughs> act one and act two. They said, no, no, through the show. I said, how did he manage that? And she mm. had a corset on. So she said <gasps> that she was stuffing frozen peas <laughs> inside of her <laughs> costuming, shall we say. That's so, fantastic. I was like, Wow, you know. So I mean, you know, bravo to so the costume ladies. So she hit those ladies. notes because she was cold. <laughs> <laughs> bravo to the costume ladies who That's are doing fantastic. all the washing every night because frozen peas everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> the show must go on. Let's talk for a minute about musicians and you know one of the stories you've experienced. Uh, this is huge because you're. I mean, when we talk about singers, we're also talking about anyone that uses their voice, but. You're, you're working with performers that, you know, might be doing belting out eight shows a week, musicians that are doing a show every day. So there's really opportunity for repetitive strain and, and those sorts of things, isn't Absolutely, there? Absolutely, yeah. 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 The biggest thing in musicians, and if you're a musician and you're listening, you get it. But it's usually if I ask, um, so what, how many times a week do you do exercise? Do you <laughs> do anything for fun? And I phrase it like that because typically they don't. it's not so regular. So the musician's <laughs> listening now, looking at me, kind of going, uh -huh. what is that? What's exercise? And literally they'll ask, what is that? And I'm like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, this one good situation was that through the, the show, the, the, the length of the show in London that was happening, uh, these musicians were really got an idea that they had to do a bit more with their bodies. Mm. Um, and it was through conversations with myself and with other therapists and whatnot and just in their own interest, etc. So they some of them went on a bit of a running sort of training process. Um, but at one stage, just because I mentioned how like, oh, if you work on your core stability, that'll help with this neck or rib thing that they were dealing with. But I was dealing with their forearm and elbow as well. Um, and so I was managing that. But that, that really needed them to uh, commit to doing a little bit of light loading through the tendons and exercises quite regularly. And so they saw the benefit of it and it really helped. So they were like, right, we'll get it. And they got a little band, TheraBand we call <laughs> it, uh, wrapped around them and between acts they would sort of get that going. And then it progressed towards clearing a bit of space and just doing a few exercises. <laughs> yeah. And then really quickly between them, they had an incentive program. They had a glute, a gluteal muscle and an abdominal sort of challenge oh, cool. amongst the whole pit area. Yeah. They cleared all of the area so that the, the, the band members and the musicians that wanted to go and 
you know, drink a little pint of beer between <laughs> acts, they would run off to the pub <laughs> and then they'd clear the space out and they'd have therabands, they'd music kind of playing. They had like challenges to say how that many so sit-ups cool. and planks can you do and this sort of thing. And we were like, how is this happening? <laughs> and I was like, I want to come and join in. This is great. Um, but they really worked on their core. They, you know, got such in control and in autonomy of their problems it was just awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. well, that sounds like a place you want to be uh, good work ethic or morale oh my goodness another little tiny interruption because there's some australian reviews as well on apple Podcasts. i just want to thank j david los jane g bish chris and bluebird 03 thanks for those reviews guys um, right, voice artists. Let's talk about some voice artists that you've worked with. I mean, this can this can be actors or people that basically do voice work as a career, which most people do in their closets these days. It's a booming area. Absolutely. But tell me about actors and the voice and voice artists. Yeah, well, usually the ones I've seen have been doing some show or some uh, acting role um, in a show, which isn't um, maybe a full-time um uh, time constraint unless you're in the rehearsal phase of the show re yeah. re-rehearsing in new role members new cast members and that sort of thing um, but uh, they uh, will do on the side some voice acting mm. doing some book reading or reading for something you know as a uh, audio script or whatever um, and so some days would be long six hour days of, of recording and there might be a few days of that and they schedule it for weeks on end. So they've got quite a busy vocal sort of life. And again, you're thinking, oh, how do they manage? But vocalists and singers, you know, I think you you relate to this. All of their life is about their pipes doing well. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. and maintaining that, yeah. getting their headspace in the right place, you know, kind of man managing what friends they have, how, how much they go out at night and what they drink, what it's they eat. It's a big deal. It's a big yeah. deal. And mm -hmm. most of them are pretty entwined with this This makes it all work and this doesn't and I've got to cut out what doesn't, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some extremely a bit more frantic and anxious about it all, but others just find their groove and they sit in it and they're really diligent. So I want to value you guys, if you're listening, mm -hmm. that – like when someone books a gig and they're getting a singer in to do a gig at a wedding, um, value yourself enough to charge what you need to charge because they're not paying for you to sing some notes. Mm -hmm. They're not paying for you because you've got a band together that's been together so long. They're paying for you because you can get that on a certain date at a certain time because you can manage your life mm -hmm. so that if you have a cold two weeks early, you can get over it. You can do the things to manage that. If you've had some work two days early, you can recover well and sort of get things back on track or you're not getting over emotional. So you're getting sort of frantic and in the moment, just not connecting well and doing well to sing in that moment and sing what you need to sing to story tell and do the wonderful things you do as singers. So I'm just valuing you to say charge what you need to charge because yeah. you're worth it. You're worth all of that. You're worth all of your experience in life, your experience in mm -hmm. as a human but as a vocalist and in just managing all of those factors so that in the moment you can connect and do a good that job. That is so good. I'm so glad but you said that. Melding back to that, like, mm. you know, I've treated you know, this gentleman's neck um, and it was a, a degree of um, neck restriction and tightness. He could manage his voice fairly well, um, but he could notice how sitting for hours on end and he would really just go into interesting postures because he probably wasn't doing that as much as getting on stage and being free to kind of move around and walk around. So managing that was interesting how much that affected the vocalizing. Mm -hmm. and, and it got tired a little quickly thinking, what? And we could really test out some of the patterns uh, that vocalizing, he was doing good things and he had good scope to kind of recover well vocally and the muscles involved. Um, but the neck was the restrictor thing. So I could just treat that, had to kind of treat enough to find the main issue there and the driving issue, not just treat the muscles and get it a bit looser and get him through a few days after seeing me, but getting to the root of the issue. And um, uh, that was awesome. It was good. Let's talk about circus and circus artists who you said in the, you know, at the start about shoulders. What's a story from a show or a performer you've worked with and that particular area of the body? <laughs> Well, the circus ones, if you're listening, um, you know what I'm saying, where often you won't 
always listen to the advice and you go, yeah, well, I can kind of get back, you know, soon. I'm a bit of a Superman, aren't I? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and shoulders are a more typical um, thing I've seen a lot of. But um, generally, like I say, there is just a lot less injuries uh, in the data we, we can see in, in research around um, um, the literature um, to sort of see the less injuries compared to the dance world. But it might be a limitation on it in studies. But anyway, getting to this, so it's a shoulder um, issue that this person had. And shoulder issues where there is a bit of soft tissue related um, restriction, irritation, the shoulder's a tricky joint um, and a tricky area to get better. A lot of dynamics with the scapula moving quite mobile. And the shoulder, we move that joint the most out of all the joints in our body. So it's got the most I movement I did not involved. know that. That is so, interesting. So... Um, also, um, you know, they would probably look at me and sort of say, what stretch is this going to sort it out so I can get on? And I'm like, you've got to understand we've got a four to five week process where we've got to let the irritation settle down and get some deeper muscles here stronger so they can manage with what you're going to do here. And he wasn't completely off, so there was a bit of a um, training a little, doing a little num. Uh, item and a little bit of performing um, uh, but it was just killing him not to get back and do the, the tricks and the things he wanted so there was definitely a different narrative at work compared to what he told me going on <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely gearing exercises to be really functional and so our exercises weren't just kind of off oh, some pulling thera bands and um, getting lifting some weights in different ways it was very fun like having a foam roller on the ground and hitting a, a plank and um, push up position one hand on the roller one hand on the ground and rolling the roller from hand to hand so that was kind of fun mm. and then he kind of wanted to flick up into a handstand so I was like let's just look at your control <laughs> here out. let's just you know <laughs> load through here so there was like pitching it back to what he needed to do for the rehab point of view was difficult and there was a kind of a we had to just um sit in between what I wanted and what he wanted in a little middle and just watch it really closely and we got there it was really nice <laughs> so tell me on all of this is you know what's the heel time obviously everything's different to get back on the show when do you push through and when do you stop I mean big question and um, uh, definitely uh, a good thing to go on here is to um, not just Google something and trust your experience <laughs> as performers. Um, definitely um, really look around the local area you have or zoom in to um, therapists that might have a bit more experience in your area and your um, uh, genre and your sort of area of the arts and that sort of thing because they'll have the experience to know what rigors you're under and what you need to get through um, uh, and and some of that logistics if you see a therapist more in sports um, they're going to have their perspective they'll probably be smart enough to think oh so what are you going to be going through the next two weeks and help you work it out but often they'll just go on their default to know what they're used to um, so try definitely try and sort of find a therapist and usually if you're really blown up with an injury and you're thinking oh oh gosh if you if it's a few days afterwards that you go and see someone that's a better time okay say big ankle injury or something where you let the inflammation settle down so we can see a bit more what is this looking like for two weeks ahead what mm -hmm. what are we looking at um, as far as your management um, so you get a bit more out of that session to get a bit more that's good to know type you thing. don't have to go on the day of but definitely you know I'd be careful of um, googling something and finding information out where I think that's it's at the age where Google tells us a lot um, and it is proactive and good to kind of do your best with all of that um, but therapists have you know strong training have specialty training to know the phases of inflammation to know what sort of problem you have quickly diagnose for you what's happening and I think the diagnosis is the key to know what injury is this what is it not <laughs> so then do I do I push through and sort of get through this thing or what can I hold back and so in my career it's definitely been how do I juggle all of that <laughs> to hold back enough and to know what things are really going to flare this and not and hold that space a little bit 
Oh my goodness, I also just want to do a shout out to the UK, Evie Page 1982 for your five star review and Lorna on tour. Thank you so much. Hey, if I haven't called out your name, it's because I haven't looked up your country. So get on my DMs, social media, Lara Bian Capilcha on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and say, Lara, you didn't call out my name. Tell me your country and I will do it in episode seven. So no easy answers there. Sorry. Yeah, and there's probably none on this one, but... You know, how do you know what's preventative and what's maintenance? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. all of that kind of. You always say well, when there's pain, there's normally weakness hmm. or compensation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not always weakness, but but quite typically there are areas that are weaker, muscle groups that are weaker that the performer doesn't know about. <laughs> I hate when he says it's weak. <laughs> well, I think I recollect that being when we were dating. Because I was dancing full time then, and I was like don't you dare say I'm weak. Do you know how much I'm working out and how much I'm training? <laughs> and I looked and I went, oh gosh. <laughs> you don't call a dancer weak. Are you crazy? <laughs> I that completely wrong. Like, but of course, to a physiotherapist go. or physical therapist, they're talking in a different I'm way. Talking like a bit balances. more. Balances. <laughs> yeah. Muscle balances. That that muscle is weaker than this one. And we've got to work on that. Look, we can get this better. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's like... It's all right, I forgive Rrr. you. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but uh, mm-hmm. for me, preventative and maintenance-based work is uh, the same kind of thing. Um, and uh, it's all very important. So I think thinking of your body, if you've got access to a therapist, if you've got some insurance to help or um, work can help you, I think the encouragement is um, uh, really hone into your body and see it like if I've got some help available or I can just kind of invest in my body a little bit to work on things. If you know that one side of your hip area is wonky or just it's always a bit off there and I know how to get around it and manage it to some degree, you might say. But if I can get some therapy on it, some work on it, to actually work out where's that coming from, that could be an easy fix. Mm. That could be an easy answer to say, do these sort of exercises, this muscle's weak, yes, or... Mm-hmm. <laughs> tired or I might say it more comfortably than saying weak but you know um, but find some root issues to do with that or just t- teach you how to warm up a bit differently before mm. performing um, which often it's just we just get into ruts and there's a culture in stretching in dance that I'm happy to be working towards changing to just not stretch yeah. too long and all the time and that sort of yeah. thing but, um, but just to look at things a bit differently use it like a preventative thing an investment in your body and, and go for it. The little niggles, the little little things that are a little bit off or a little bit problematic. Um, if you go and see someone about to really explore, have I really done everything I can for that? Your body is your tool. I say there's sort of the, the temple that we do all things from. You know, it's the, yeah. it's a very important resource. It's your, um, um, it's what you do it all with. And you don't look after it, then it will tend to knock on. And you know. Yeah, that's so true. Well, who's liable to pay? Obviously, you've worked in different places and it's going to be different from theatre to film. But generally, what have you seen? Who's liable if you're on a show and in a contract? Obviously, if you're not in a contract, then no one's liable um, with these injuries. Yeah. yeah. So um, in my time in London and in those arts industries, it's usually that uh, performers outside of being in a full-time show aren't well paid they're doing you know hustle jobs they're doing things on the side and all that sort of thing and so they're usually not finding the the uh, enough money to come privately to a clinic and see yeah that's someone true specialty. and it's expensive um, yeah. but um typically um the shows would pay and in my time in london at least i don't know too much currently and um not at liberty to say right now in mm-hmm. this year of uh, in west end area but it was often that the company would want to pay and and look after it, um, and they would have regular sessions with therapists for the performers to be seen so mm-hmm. this was like a that's so like good. highlight oh i'm gonna show so i can get i some can help, get some you know? treatment yeah. um uh, rather than insurance i think the insurance was just um, sticky and, and interesting to do so i think that was the um, idea but it was always covered from one or the other mm-hmm. but generally this sort of show um, and uh, Melbourne theatre scene it was 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 similar. It was like some mix of the two or something, but it was that the show would look after it. But it was an interesting conversation. Sometimes the show management would be saying to the performer, "Well, part of seeing someone and getting help would be your responsibility. You're a performer. You're a mm. dancer. All these things." And so um, 
there was va- that was valid conversation yeah, and difficult that's hard, you yeah. know um and just often you know, sometimes we get it performers it just comes down to finance right sometimes mm. and so you can afford what you can you can afford and that sort of thing but um yeah. interesting and whereas um here in the usa it's often the the company um that is sorting things down and has someone has some sort of therapist involved with the company for that reason to to manage mm. all of that i would say in that area Shows in London, Melbourne, and through America are taking a lot of responsibility, management companies and production companies, to look after injuries and look after the cast members. Um, And so it is amazing to see such proactive and such care for the performer, whereas maybe in the culture of the performing arts wasn't so back in the 60s, You just look at the old films and it's like, work hard, I'm injured, keep going, it's 2 a.m., keep going. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank goodness times have changed, right? Yeah. And where you're working Um, now, of course, um, with NeuroTour, which has got a clinic in London and a clinic in New York and a clinic in Atlanta, Georgia, and has PTs out on tours all across the US, you they actually have uh, their own physical therapist or massage therapist yeah. on the show with them that comes through yeah. from your company, which There's is amazing, mix. isn't it? There's a mix, and I've got responsibility and the the pleasure to to be involved with um, uh, shows that have a therapist that they get involved locally, and we have a network around America that we can find a therapist that we've trained a little or had something to do with so we know how they work they know how we work and so they know how um treating performers um goes a bit better and how to do that better to make sure some degree of consistency happens um and then yeah some shows have full-time pts with them you know full-time through the week to treat before the show in the Mm. show all that sort of thing and it's a really awesome setup Uh, so it's privileged to be part of that thing here um did you hear him go American? He's done that a few times. Here, he's a little bit British, a little bit Australian, and a little bit American, and now a little bit Southern. I do say dances though. I you didn't say that. y'all yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've said that mm-hmm. once. Anyway, guys, if you want to see Andrew, you can obviously book a session with him if you're in Georgia or Nashville because he's up there a lot. But um, you can also go to larabiancapilcha.com and message me because we live together Andrew and I and we're married and right now I'm enjoying snuggling up to him while we do this interview which is you know work perks and you can reach out to do a zoom (laughs) session with him (laughs) ask him questions obviously he can't put hands on in a zoom session but he often does things like that for performers that's actually been really useful I've been able to help vocalists and things to do some self massage work around the Mm -hmm. throat but even just advise what do i need to do some voice rest are there some simple vocal rehab ideas to go through and point them in direction of good slt speech pathology Mm. type sort of uh, specialist to see things yeah Yeah. well anyway guys with you on the journey you want to say it too babe with you on the journey until next time bye friends Hey, on my Facebook, there is a healthy, wealthy, wise artist group made up of a tribe of artists seeking to live the healthy, wealthy, wise artist life. They ask each other questions and throw around ideas. You can join the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise Artist Community private Facebook group at Lara Bianca Pilcher on Facebook under groups. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. If you want more, head to larabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, Lara Bianca Pilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me and I'll give you a shout out. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise artist living towards your dream life. Bye, friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby, Andrew Pilcher, who does all the editing on this podcast.